Hi, it's repair time. Check it out. We've got a KRK Systems Rowkit 6, uh, which is a uh, 6 inch uh, powered studio monitor. And um, the, by many accounts, this is actually quite a reasonably regarded uh, studio monitor. And of course, yes, cue all the uh, fanboys about, oh, that's crap and everything else. Made in China, but designed and engineered in the United States of America and quality assurance inspected. It's got to be good. So yes, it is a reasonably expensive studio monitor. I've only got the one of them. Um, and apparently it's faulty. It makes a buzzing sound when you plug it in. Cover before powering on. Loud. So um, yeah, I'll take that off and maybe put a bit of thicker cardboard on there or something. And um... <laughs> Fingers crossed. If you want to know what uh, studio monitors I use, I use the uh, Alesis 520 uh, USB ones. Um, I prefer the USB. I don't necessarily like these ones from a convenience uh, point of view because I, I love having the volume control actually on the speakers themselves and on, on the front and uh, the headphone jack on the front as well because I'm always plugging in my headphones to you know record the amp hour or record other things or listen and stuff like that. It's just very convenient to have it on the front of the uh, USB uh, speakers and the volume control just there I can eh -eh tweak it to my heart's content. So I don't like these ones that have the volume uh, control on the back. This one's got, yeah, it's got volume and, oh, nice indents on that. And it's got a high frequency uh, level adjust as well. That's for the uh, tweeter, plus one dB and minus two. So I'll put it on minus two because it's supposed to be loud and unbalanced inputs. This is not a USB one. Anyway, let's turn it on, see what it sounds like. Okay, I know it's probably not good to do this, but because uh, we could damage the tweeter or the tweeter could already be uh, damaged, I don't know. Um, but anyway, we have to look at the symptoms, so plug it in. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I can feel that vibrate, that poor little tweeter. Wow, it must be getting... The full, like, like square, like <laughs> the, uh, the amplifier must be oscillating and putting uh, a full, uh, the full rail voltage square wave into that thing. That's all I can think of. That is horrid. So anyway, let's take it apart. We've got uh, four screws on the front. Looks like we can pull out the drivers, but uh, I suspect we're going to have to uh, take the screws out the back to get the board out, because that's what, what, what we're really interested in. So I'll start with the back one around here. Let's go. Um, I expect this thing to... I think this is... Is this a bi-amplified one that actually has a separate amplifier, the uh, woofer and the tweeter? I think so. In this case, the tweeter's oscillating. So it's almost uh, certainly bi-amplified amplified as they call it with the uh, two amplifiers and uh, I expect this to have one of those um, uh, like integrated uh, you know off the shelf uh, power driver chips probably like a single in line package one they're very common and I just had a look online and I didn't want to uh, get any spoilers for you know if this is a common fault with these things but I was looking for the uh, schematic couldn't find it on first search so even if the schematic's not available should still be relatively easy to uh, work and uh, repair and troubleshoot something like this because uh, as I said it's probably going to use a like one of those off the shelf uh, amplifier chips and you should be able to get the data sheet for that it'll have the app note it'll probably follow the app note very quickly the PCB in there might even be if you're lucky might even be single sided which makes it easy to uh, trace and things like that because they do try and build these down to a uh, price point so, you know, why use a double, newfangled double-sided piece of beer if you don't have to? But this one's probably double-sided. But anyway, should be relatively easy to uh, track this one down. Anyway, let's go. And as is common with these things, just self-tappers into particle board slash MDF if you're lucky. These would be solid MDF on the outside, but uh, could have uh, something else on the um, holding the screws in. Now, wow, that is one heavy-ass back panel. Everything's going to be mounted on there. It's probably got the power transformer on here. So, let's go in there. Yep, that's that's not MDF, is it? Anyway, we're in like Flynn. Check it out. Ah, oh, nice shielding on the transformer down there. Wow, they've done well. And actually, this looks uh, rather nice. Look at all the heat shrink uh, tubing on the back of the uh, mains wire in here. That's absolutely brilliant. We've got some filter caps 
in there. That's all cable. <laughs> it's all really bundled and cable tied very nicely. Um, we've got the connector here gunked it down so it doesn't vibrate loose. Uh, once again, the main uh, power wiring over there is also gunk down so it doesn't come loose so they got some gunk on one of the uh supply caps there yeah they've just gunked up everything now they've junk gunked up the output of the transformer there ah uh, somebody had fun anyway this is a very typical arrangement for uh something like this we've got our uh preamp board of course and our um input like preamp and filtering and stuff like that i there could be something wrong with that and it could be feeding the signal into the driver but i like i think it's more likely than not there's something wrong with the driver and that puppy's oscillating and i don't expect to find it on the uh preamp board anyway we could actually uh test that i guess by just uh can we, could we just disconnect the input board and see if it uh, still does it? Anyway, and I just, I just love all the rubber they've put inside this thing. And look at this. This is the RCA connector input. And it's in like a block. It's in like a compliant mount block. Wow. That's like, that's, why have they done that? I mean, I can't see why you'd need to vibration isolate the, the RCA. Oh no, no, there we go. No, it's not. No, hang on. What? You, 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 okay, no, it's screwed in. No, it doesn't feel compliant. Like there's no need to do that. That's just really strange. Anyway, um, yeah, good attention to detail on this thing. It'd want to be. It's not a cheap unit. Wow, check out the rubber mount on that transformer. Beautiful. And of course, inside the box, we've got our standard filler material that's just all whacked around there that's pretty common krk drivers i don't know where they actually uh you know get them from if they make them themselves or whatnot or they just get them from uh some supplier or of course you know there's nothing wrong with where you get them from as long as you uh, uh you know as long as the quality is uh controllable and uh the performance is there you measure and characterize and uh, design your enclosure and everything else around your uh driver so Anyway, our poor little abused tweed is up the top there. But it's interesting that they've got the spade lugs. But good that we can just... Oh, no, actually, they've gone up to the tweeter. That's interesting. Somebody... I don't think that's factory original. That's going up to the tweeter. There's no reason. Look, the woofer is um, soldered directly on the board. Maybe that's a bit how you're doing. Not sure, but yeah, okay, it is what it is. That goes off to the woofer, but uh, or the full range driver, or mid range driver, or low range driver, or whatever you want to call it. But the tweeter has spade connectors, somebody's at a go, at least disconnecting it. And for those preamp aficionados, there you go JRC, Japan Radio Corp. They're, uh, you know, really common as mud in uh, these types of stuff, they make reasonable. Op amps and audio stuff and op amps and whatnot. Um, even the uh, single in line package down there is a JRC. They still couldn't get all the uh, couldn't get it all routed on there, and they've had to put a few little jumper links on there. Oh, the first rule of troubleshooting before thou shalt test voltages, because we're not up to that point yet, is a visual check. So, um, I can't see anything on this preamp board, but as I expect. I wouldn't suspect it. Um, it's more likely that there's something wrong with the power amp. So there's nothing visually wrong on there at all. Basically what you'd be looking for is burnt out resistors, uh, you know, or other components, bulging electrolytic uh, caps, of course, but these tiny ones, no, that's nothing. They've just put some uh, black gunk on that. Um, so that's all hunky-dory. All right, thankfully the uh, power amp module just uh, screws off the back panel there. Now we can have a look down in here and once again we're going to be searching for any visual signs of course you check the uh the caps over here yikon oh come on krk you know yikon don't think i've heard of them um anyway 105 degrees c rated come on put some you know really top quality brand caps in there jrc again um but once again i see there's gunk everywhere. Check it out. Like, they've put it all around the shop. Um, yeah, those single-in-line package uh, power amps, as I said, they're not using uh, discrete trannies in there. But look at this. 
This is our tweeter based on the wiring, okay, and the fact that uh, the tweeter will be less power than the woofer um, by amplified, so separate amplifiers for each. So this um, was a two, four, six, uh, eight pin, uh, no, seven pin uh, package down in there would be the tweeter amplifier. But look, so this is the wiring, and look at all the black gunk down in there. Now look, there's a poor little resistor or something under there. I'm just wondering if this black gunk has, like, become, or is, or well, wouldn't be when you first put it in, that'd be dumb, but uh, if it's become conductive, contaminated, or something like that, because it's all down in there, look at it. I really don't like that, and all down there as well. Wow, look at that. I mean, like, they've, ugh, it's horrible stuff. I don't like it. Sure enough, look at this. If I probe some of this gunk, I'm not actually touching a component there. It's like a meg. Like, what the... Like, that's just... Like, that's ridiculous. Why would you have anything in there that starts to go conductive with age or, or contamination, moisture absorption, or whatever the hell is going on with this stuff? Check out this insanity. If I measure on the top of these... <laughs> electrolytic caps here, which have been gunked together, right? Look at that. I mean, this is insanity. Like, look, I'm not even touching the top of the, the top of the can there, and it's conductive. Like, it, yeah, it's high, but it, like, that can create feedback paths or whatever it is. Like, that's just ridiculous. There you go, there's a close-up of this gunk. It's conductive gunk, trademark. I do like their attention to detail on this uh, board here, look at this. they got a rubber baby buggy bumper on there. Nice, vibration isolation, obviously. And for those bottom board aficionados, there you go, they've got some uh, tin plate on there to help with the uh, current handling on the requisite uh, traces, but you know, generally there's not too much going too far on here. The uh, speakers uh, basically come uh, straight out. All right, let's uh, turn this puppy back on, hook the scope up to uh, the output. I've disconnected one lead of the uh, tweeter. So let's put it on. We're on, what, 50 volts per division or something like that. Let's have a go. Hey, there we go. Just as I thought, big ass square wave, because that's what it sounded like. There you go. At what frequency? Interesting to note that it takes a few seconds to come on. I did see a relay on that board, so it's like got uh, power on uh, thump uh, protection or whatever it is it's called. But yeah, well, there's your problem. Um, 61.7 hertz at 40 volts peak to peak. Yeah, that'll blow the snot out of your driver. So our amplifier is, uh, well, certainly amplifying, <laughs> amplifying too much. So what I'm gonna do is just like, for, before I attack the circuit and things like that, like try and reverse engineer it and, you know, figure out what chip it's using and all that sort of stuff, I'm gonna try and just clean up that conductive gunk I've found and like, you know, because look, it's right on the output. It's right on the damn output wire going to the po the positive output of the driver for the, the tweeter and it's oscillating so I'm gonna get, try and get in there and somehow uh, d hopefully it dissolves off uh, with you know some sort of uh, PCB cleaner or something like that otherwise I might have to do some um, scraping I like I found an issue there I'm, I'm gonna fix it now this is interesting if we power it up without the preamp connected we don't get the oscillation. So, but that doesn't mean that the source of the oscillation is coming from the preamp board and it's being fed in there. It could be the fact that, uh, you know, it's not switching the relay in there and it's not turning it on. I don't know, but there, there is a DC offset on that output. Certainly. Hmm. Anyway, this is interesting. If we turn it off, listen, it goes down, down, down. Maybe you can hear it. Hang on. There was like a little farty noise coming from there as you uh, switched it off. And yep, I plug it back in and it's back. And I've cut out um, all the black gunk off between all the tops of the capacitors uh, on there. Just in case there's like three different areas where the black gunk was uh, shorting out the tops of those cans. It shouldn't make a difference. They, they, maybe they're all the same potential, but maybe they're not. Maybe there are uh, some AC coupling caps or something, but that didn't make a difference.
And I found that this uh, black gunk does tend to actually flake off. So maybe I could, yeah, there we go. Look at that. So maybe I can try and get it out, get it out that way. Bloody heating compound. So there you go, that actually uh, scraped off okay. I'm gonna still give it a clean with a, you know, a PCB cleaner flux remover thing just to uh, brighten it up a bit. But anyway, I've gotten rid of the crap that was around there. And really that was uh, causing, that would have been causing leakage between the speaker output, whatever this little resistor is here, and also this link in here. And that link also, it maybe seems to have corroded a bit. Hopefully you can see that down in there. Doesn't look great, does it? Hmm. Okay, let's power it up again. It's worth a shot. And we've got DC. Hey, hello. <laughs> Do we look at this? I I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm still properly connected. Yep. Look at this. We fixed it. Wow, I didn't real. I thought the odds wouldn't have been great that that would have been it, but I thought, you know, that was definitely a conductive problem. But look, we've still got some crap on there. <laughs> Where are these little bursts coming from? Wow. That's interesting to make... Whoa, look at that. Okay, but at least our 40 volts peak to peak is gone. Awesome. No, hang on. We've repowered. And it's doing it again, but it's not square. Look at that. And its frequency, I'm sure, was changing. What was it, 61 hertz before? 350 hertz now, and it's changing. You can see the period of that changing. Wow. Hey, this knob on this siglent, I'm, I swear for a second there, didn't respond to my range change. I swear I did the indent. I can't reproduce that. Huh. Anyway, that's different. Wow. There's, that gunk was doing something, and it's still doing something. Well, presumably. And I turn it on again, and we're getting something different again. Look at that. Wow, this thing's all over the shop. Hey, is that some, uh, like, 50 hertz... Uh, Hum or so, oh no, I saw a little spike in there. Is it like 50 hertz hum? Any microphonics? Yeah, there we go. She's 100 hertz. So that's your mains. That's your full wave rectified mains doing funny business down there. And of course there is a, don't have my isolated poker, but there's a full uh, wave bridge rectifier down in there. And that's what we're seeing manifest itself with some high frequency stuff. Wow, hang on. Hey, <laughs> this is fun. Wow, we've got some sort of microphonics. I'm tapping the board there. I haven't actually cleaned up the gunk here on the board around these low ESR caps here either. So I'm going to go in there, pick all that out as well, clean it all up. Wow. Check out all the gunk in here on the bottom of these resistors here, bottom of a couple of diodes down there across this link right near. This is the negative terminal for the uh, tweeter and look it's almost as if like it's bubbled oh whoa is that that's weird I'm looking through the camcorder screen it's hard to know what I'm looking at here but geez that's it's like it's almost bubbled up what the hell anyway it is conductive and what is that conductive caused current to flow through it it probably changes its uh uh, resistance, whoa, what's going on there, is that, that's not from my spray, is that gunk, wow, what, it's almost liquid, is it, is that from my cleaning, it might have, I, I cleaned the other edge of the board, I didn't clean around here, but wow, it's almost, it, it's, it's bubbled up, what the hell is this stuff? Anyway, it's, it's definitely got to be some, well, one of the causes for the issues we're seeing here. It would cause something. Wow. Wow. The hell is this stuff? Unbelievable. Good news is it flakes off even after I put the solvent on it. It's still hard. 
and it just sort of comes off in in chips. Ah. Well, I actually I had to desolder that cap because it was a pain in the butt to get into it. And look at there's the black gunk. There it is there. And it, no, it's not leaked out of the capacitor. They've deliberately added this to try and uh, reduce the vibration on the parts. And they've come a gutsa. It's backfired on them and it's become conductive. Unbelievable. Actually, let me get the meter on that again. There's a piece of it down there. Look at that. I mean, it's high, right? But still, that is ludicrous on the side of the cap. Let's have a look. Like, I mean, you know, it's like it's very high, but it's leakage, and that could certainly be voltage uh, dependent as well. And particularly when you're talking about amplifiers, you're not, you know, nothing's working down at piddly little 3.3 volts. Everything's up at like, you know, 30, 40 volts kind of thing. And this is just unbelievable. Well done, KRK. Putting conductive gunk on your boards. Of course, it probably wasn't conductive when they uh, put it in, but it's become conductive with age, I'd say. And, well, <laughs> there's your problem. Certainly get your money's worth in the gunk. This is the negative lead of the uh, main driver. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. And there's the positive lead. <laughs> well, Houston. We have a problem. I did not desolder that poor innocent resistor there. Um, it's just... Uh, did it break off or something? Or is it... It doesn't look charred or anything. I don't think. It's covered in gunk. How can you tell? I didn't touch it. I swear. And that poor innocent little green cap is uh, just swimming in the stuff. Surely this has to be a known problem with these, doesn't it? I mean... <laughs> How many speakers out there would be affected by this? I can't believe this is the only one. Black gunk plague. I reckon that is corroded. I reckon the black gunk has actually corroded, done something to that poor resistor. It looks to be 2.2K. Uh, I've measured it. It's still there um, within its 5%. But yeah, I reckon that did, like it just fell out just fell out of the board. Unbelievable. Okay, I've sort of cleaned it up in most areas there. I've replaced the resistor. I've put the uh, capacitor back. In fact, the resistor, I didn't have a 2K2 in that uh, high wattage, so I put, uh, just mount a couple on the back as well. I've got a 6K8, or three 6K8s in parallel. She'll be right, no worries. So let's turn it on. And, uh, oh, what do we got? Ooh, ooh, it's different yet again. What is that? There's some 100 hertz hum on there, once again, with a, if you will, little excursion. Interesting. Okay, so I've got the speaker reconnected now. Let's give it another go. And we can still see a DC offset there with a bit of 100 hertz, but meh, let's fit in a signal, see what happens. For those playing along at home, the tweeter driver is a TDA2052. And the woofer driver is a TDA7286, is it? Or something like that? I can't see it. It's got some gunk on it. No, that's not a burn mark. And winner, winner, chicken dinner. But I still don't like the uh, waveform there. We've still got a DC offset there at, uh, well, that's only 100 millivolts, but not sure if you can hear that. I've got a 3.3, generating a 3.3 kilohertz signal into it, just from my phone. Um, because, uh, well, A, you just, it's easy, and B, uh, just to avoid any ground issues with, uh, like if I used a signal gen or something like that. So, and the attenuator works on the back here. You can see it uh, boost, 0 dB. You can see it drop by 1 dB, 3 dB and then boost it by 1 dB. So that seems to work. Cool. Hmm. And it doesn't look very sinusoidally, does it? Um, and it's just, like, really harsh, like there's some sort of other... I, uh, is that like a, maybe, is there the 100 hertz hum? Superimposed on that, like coming, maybe coming from the woofer? No, because we didn't hear the woofer before. 
If I disconnect that, turned off, there we go. Hmm. Well, the uh, woofer is certainly woofering, that's for sure. 1.5k, 2k, yeah, you can hear that combined. I'm not sure if you can hear that. It's like some sort of combined hum in there, but hey, we are getting a good sine wave now. What was, uh, what was going on? Oh yeah, that's pretty harsh. <laughs> There's something else going on. Wow. Yeah, check it out. As we go higher in frequency, we're, we're good. Decent sinusoidal now, but after below about 4 kilohertz, it starts to distort a lot. And then, of course, it gets so low that, see, that's going into the, that's going to the tweeter. Something's wrong there. That's a 1.1 kilohertz. Yeah. It's still a bit sick, but basically, the amplifier's working. Both of them. Now, if I actually disconnect the tweeter, the woofer actually sounds pretty good um, over the frequency range, so that's okay. So maybe, um, we, well, of course, because uh, you saw how it was like physically shaking. I could feel the vibe, huge excursions of the cone on that tweeter, and they're not designed to do that when it was applying that 40 volts uh, peak to peak square wave across it. And um, we have probably caused some mechanical damage, so that could uh, certainly um, cause the distortion I was hearing, plus maybe it feeds back, because I was measuring directly across the coil there, so maybe that was affecting the uh, drive that was seen on the um, scope. So anyway, let's have a look at the drive signal without the tweeter. And that is as clean as a whistle without the tweeter on there. You might still be able to hear it, but that's some of the woofer actually doing that. So I think... Now, waveform distortion is caused by the physical uh, deformity in the tweeter. That's a Bobby Dazzler. There we go. Yep, that is that is fine. You can see the amplitude drop as the frequency goes down. That is fine. So our our I think our amp board is working just fine, but our tweeter it's rooted. And I'm yep, I've sure got the uh, tweeter there. connected. I'm having a hard time. There's a very distinct lack of high frequency content there. And my voice is usually very high frequency. It's got a tuner in it. Wow. It's got a pain in the ass DC connect. So let's get this front panel off, shall we? And have a look at our tweeter. Oh, there's the poor little puppy. Oh, poor abused little thing. KRK driver. There you go, 4 ohm tweeter, but like seriously, I'm sure it's completely knackered because when, when I had my hand on there, when I first powered that up, I could like feel the excursions hitting me. It was just insane from a tweeter. Wow. Actually, it's completely open. <laughs> All right, just as a temporary job, I've bodged in this... Uh, Sony driver, it's a 12 ohm um, as opposed to a 4 ohm, but meh, whatever. Hopefully we'll get uh, something out of it. This is like a mid-range uh, driver, so anyway, uh, we'll get some sort of response at least. Hopefully, and see if it sounds better. If you just have the dicky little pin, then uh, that does sound a bit better, but... Anyway, I do have a supplier for... Six not great. Anyway. A couple of variants. Meh. It definitely does zero to 20 Leds. Zero to 10 amps. Mm. Perfect. I buzzed out the... Actually, let's plug in the uh, companion tweeter by way of the little uh, capacitor filter there. Um, it's just a little uh, piezo uh, type. These speakers came from a Sony, uh, crappy Sony three-way speaker. Let's give that a burl. All right. Oh, look at those copper heat There pipes. we go. Beautiful. That sounds um, decent. Well, uh, you know, there. have a Can listen. Check it out. I'm thinking a rather radian uh, card. I don't believe it's, you know, hugely powerful, but uh, good enough for uh, this sort of all-in-one purpose. And there's our webcam attachment there. That's going up there. So that's the, uh, that's the NSA edition. Okay, 
So until I get the uh, the real tweeter in there to uh, you know check his performance, I could uh, like like sweep it and analyze it and do all sorts of uh, other stuff. But it basically sounds quite reasonable with a completely crap non-matched um, mid-range and uh, tweeter in there. But the amplifiers seem to be doing their job. No worries whatsoever. So I guess kind of, sort of, thumbs up to the amplifier for not crapping itself. Um, but on the other hand, the physical construction of it, while the rest of it was good, this black gunk is absolutely ridiculous. And sure enough, I had a look and, like, apparently this is a thing. With, um, I don't know if it's in the newer generation uh, Rokit speakers, but certainly older gen, I believe this is a Gen 1 um, speaker. So yeah, it's got the original black gunk of death, I guess. And um, it's just it's turned to this hard conductive crap, which was causing the amplifier to actually oscillate. Unbelievable. And it looks like it caused a resistor to uh, just like corrode away one of the leads and it just basically dropped out. But uh, like, a apart from that, I just put the resistor back in and, and Bob's your uncle. It seems to be at least going again so I'm gonna until I can get like a replacement tweeter I don't know if I'll even bother um really with the crusty state of uh the board in this thing and the fact that I've only got one so I'd have to get another one a gen one and then they like are they even matched are they a match design them as a match pair or whatever I don't know it might be useful for something I'll just use it as a lab uh powered speaker or something like that here for the bench um, might do it. So, yeah, I can get a replacement uh, tweeter for this for about 30 bucks or uh, something like that. Maybe, you know, it's a bit pricey. So if one goes on special, I might uh, pick one up and get it back into fully operational condition. But I'm going to call that one basically uh, repaired for now until I can get one. If anyone's got a spare one, they want to send into the mailbag, by all means. <laughs> um, otherwise, oh, I uh, get one on eBay if one comes up cheap. So I wonder if they ever actually uh, recalled these things or not, or, you know, like, because that's a huge problem. How long did it take for it to show up? Uh, typically, um, if you've had this uh, KRK black gunk of death problem, then uh, leave it in the comments down below. Let us know how old your speakers were before they started to shut themselves. I'm sure it took quite a few years for it to actually... Uh, you know, start happening, and I've uh, been reading a little bit, people like reported other symptoms, I, I didn't see anyone who had the big 40 volt excursions that I was seeing that killed my poor little tweeter, um, actually I don't know what happened to it, because it was actually, it was kind of working, but when I took it all apart, then it was like, it just died, so I don't know, like physical, just eh, doing that, and something inside just went kaput, I don't know, anyway, she's open as... So a huge thumbs down to KRK for that one. That was just an epic fail. Um, <laughs> has it kind of uh, ruined me for KRK speakers? I don't know. I don't even think they make one with like a, a volume control and headphones uh, jack on the front, do they? That's what I need for my uh, studio monitoring anyway. Mm. Anyway, they certainly come a guts are on that one, didn't they? But that was like an interesting repair. You know, it wasn't really a component electrical uh, a component failure. It was something that was put on the PCB to try and stop as you do inside these things. It was good design practice. I like a lot of the design practice inside this thing. It's uh, quite well um, engineered in that respect, but the black gunk that they put in there, celastic or whatever it is, if you know the exact uh, type of material they uh, used in this that went bad, please leave it in the comments down below. Um, but they, you know, were doing that um, as a good thing, you know, stopping the capacitors flapping around in the breeze stopping the cables and connectors and like other stuff but and and the wires on the uh on the board providing a bit of uh, strain relief coming out of the pcb and stuff like that so they were doing the right stuff it just it come back and bit them on the ass yeah <laughs> murphy anyway hope you like that if you did please give it a big thumbs up and as always discuss down below and yeah, go on, speaker fanboys. Kaya, Kaya, crap. Rokita, crap. What? Rokita, great. I love my Rokits. Oh, yeah, I love my Alesis ones. The 520 USBs do me just fine for a uh, compact uh, video editing monitor speaker. Anyway, go for it. Ah, audio, there's just no end to the flaming. Catch you next time.